a video review of the Residence in Boston Downtown Seaport Hotel. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel videos that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, I'm gonna be telling you everything you need to know if you're considering staying at this hotel, including the common areas of the hotel, the neighborhood around the hotel, and the inside of one of the rooms. This room, a studio king bedroom on the fifth floor. The Residence Inn is located in Boston's Seaport District. It's about a mile south from the financial district. This area used to have a lot of old warehouses and old buildings. It's all being renovated and turned into things new, including this residence inn. This hotel is about six years old. It was originally built in 1901, where it was a shoemaking company. Self-parking is $29 a night, available in the garage just right here. But you do have to pick up a key card from the valet right here that they'll give you so that you can enter that garage. Although the subway doesn't run here, the Silver Line does. It's an underground bus that kind of acts like a subway, and you can take this and connect it South Station. Just one block from the hotel is an outpost of Shake Shack from New York City. Really good burgers and shakes. If you're looking for a supermarket, there's a Trader Joe's just across from Shake Shack opening soon, and just on the corner of the hotel is a Cafe Nero. It's a coffee shop that also has an entrance from the inside of the hotel. You can enter into that coffee shop from the hotel's atrium. The door to the coffee shop, it's right here. But speaking of the atrium, you can see the elevators in the hotel as they go up. It's a really neat historic building that they've restored quite well. So when you come in the hotel, in the lobby, this is what you'll see. There's check-in desks on the right. Then if you look just to the left is the br Even the guest room floors retain this kind of classic old look to the building are here as well. They've got a big coin opera head guest laundry room with four washers and eight dryers and a little table over here where you can fold your laundry. And then just next to the laundry room is the fitness center. It's a small fitness center, but it's nice because it has windows that look out onto the street. Now that we've seen everything around the hotel, let's check out the inside of one of the rooms. This is room 523, a king studio room on the fifth floor. As you enter into the room, this is the living area plus kitchen of the room. The the bedrooms in the back past the bathroom. We'll take a look at that in a moment. What's really neat about these rooms, it's this old renovated building. And so it's got these old big wooden beams, high ceilings, wood ceilings, and it just has a really neat vibe and feel very different than a typical residence inn. But because it is a residence inn, it has a full kitchen, including a refrigerator, a stove. It's also got like utensils so you can cook. It's it's got a microwave and uh, well, there's nothing up there. But in here, it's got uh, plates, bowls, you got a coffee machine. And if you're looking for pots and pans, well, it's got pots and pans so you can cook on that stove too. Even a toaster so you can make some toast. In the room on the counter right here, there was some complimentary popcorn and some coffee for that coffee machine. There's a big flat panel television right here and a nice Nice big wide desk, plenty of room for that desk. And then as we saw just to the left was a pretty big sofa that they've got a little TV tray. So if you like to eat and watch TV at the same time, you can do that too. And this is also neat right by the door. They've got this little kind of leatherette thing. So you can put your cell phone right there uh, and uh, keep it charged right by the door. So you don't forget your phone when you walk out. All right, now let's go into the bedroom part of the room. It's, a, it's just an interesting setup because there's actually the sink right here, just kind of open to the room. Room, and uh, with the sink we look in the mirror, it's kind of now bright, uh, but uh, the bathroom or the toilet is just to the right of that, um, so we'll check that out in a little bit. But then just on the other side of the toilet room is the king size bed. Uh, it's got a kind of nice wood backboard up there. And then same, this part of the room also has those high ceilings and those unfinished wooden beams. Uh, looking out here, the wall to the window, I've got it closed because, well, I'll open it because you probably want to see what you can see outside of this window. But I look out at the parking garage right there. That's the parking garage. Self-parking is available for $29 a night, which is pretty convenient. And I think I can actually see my car through that window. Um, this is the closet. It's not really a built-in closet. It's kind of a self-standing closet. Looks like something they bought at 
Ikea. Uh, there's another television in here. They've got a little thing where you can put your suitcase, and my case where I've got my uh, yellow jacket in case it's cold. And now the final part of the room just on the other side of that sink is the part of the bathroom that has the shower. It is a walk-in shower, no bathtub in this particular room. It has a uh, handheld and a rain head, and then it's got the toilet right here, and some interesting artwork, some old brick artwork. Maybe that's what the outside of the building used to look like. Okay, so it turns out the air conditioning didn't work in that last room, so they switched me rooms. Now I'm in room 623. Let's take a quick look at this one. And this one's definitely a different setup than the previous room. This one's a one bedroom, so it's actually got the living room right here separate as a different room from the bedroom, which is actually has a door to separate it. The previous room I realized was also an accessible room, so that's why I had a shower and not a bathtub. So this one, the kitchen's right here. It's got the little bar facing into it. The bedroom is a separate room that actually does have a door that you can close. Here's the king size bed. Television over here. This particular room has a little bit better of a view. Uh, you can see that garage I was looking out at before is on the right hand side and you can see some of the buildings over here. I'll also show you what this looks like in the day and if you look straight down then you see the hotel's kind of front valet drive right there. Walking away from the window takes us to the bathroom. This one a more traditional bathroom. The sink is actually in kind of its own little room right here and then just over to the left is the toilet and then this one as I mentioned earlier earlier does have a bathtub along with a handheld and a rain head. And in case you're wondering about the artwork, yes, it's the same in this room as it was in the other one. And the other difference on this floor being the sixth floor and the top floor of the hotel, I think the ceilings are actually a bit taller. They're really quite tall on this floor. Well, good morning. Now that we've seen everything around the hotel, it is time for our video review. So if you watch our hotel reviews regularly, you'll know we rate things on a scale of one to five Tophers. And this hotel is going to get three and a half Tophers. So first we'll talk about the pros and then we'll talk about the cons of why this hotel got three and a half Tophers. Pros, it's a really neat new residence in. Actually, it's not that new. It opened in 2014, so it's been open for five or six years at the time I did this video, but it still has a really new vibe. I just love the feel of the building and then it's not a classic boring residence in. It's really neat in this old renovated 1901 hotel. Uh, the other pros, the air conditioning in my second room worked. Uh, my sleeping was pretty good. Big size room. I love all the amenities that the room has. And I also really appreciated free breakfast this morning. It's a typical residence in breakfast, but the breakfast was pretty good and the eating area it's also neat in the lobby because it's not, again not that traditional residence in crappy eating area it's nice to eat kind of with all the old brickwork on the sides of the room and the final pro was this is a category 5 Marriott hotel and that means if you have the Marriott credit card you can redeem the free credit card nights here which is actually what I redeemed to stay here so it was um, like 35,000 points or 30,000 points, something like that, which meant that my credit card certificate that I get every year for just having the Marriott credit card, I could use for free for this night. Actually, the cash rate of this night was really expensive. It's like $500 a night, the night I'm staying here. I think there's something at the Boston Convention Center. By the way, this is like walking distance to the Boston Convention Center. So if you're coming to a convention, another great reason to stay here, though I don't know that I would pay $500 a night, but but I would definitely use my free credit card certificate to stay here another time. The self-parking for $29 I think is a pretty reasonable rate and I also like that the self-parking is right next to the hotel because many city hotels typically don't have self-parking. Okay, so now on to the cons. Being in the Seaport District of Boston, it's a bit removed from kind of the hustle and bustle of most of the city. If you're here for touristy type things, most of the touristy stuff like Quincy Market and Boston Common is like a 20 or 25 minute walk away. I mean, it's not all that far 
but it's far enough to just kind of feel removed from the rest of the things. Also, the subway stations are not super near to this hotel, so you'll probably be Ubering quite a bit if you're staying here. The good news is Ubers are pretty plentiful in Boston, so that's not something that makes it tremendously awful. But just know that you won't be walking out of your hotel and being right in the heart of things. Another con, I know I said the room was quiet. It was quiet for most of the night until the morning when the planes started coming in. Here I can hear every plane that comes in and lands. So if you're a light sleeper, that might be a little bit annoying. Also, I could hear like water running from one of the rooms next door. I think that's something about being in one of these old hotels that just the way that the pipes run. I didn't hear it like all night, but when my neighbor woke up and started running the water, I could hear the water. And of course, the biggest con, at least impacting my stay, was being put in a room where the air conditioning didn't work. I called the front desk, they sent someone up, he came up, and super nice guy, he flipped the breakers, tried to reset it, it didn't work, and was sort of like, well, why don't you wait about 20 minutes, maybe, maybe it'll work again. Uh, if it doesn't work in 20 minutes, maybe call us. I'm like, it is 10.30 at night, I would like my air conditioning to work, so maybe you can just switch me rooms? Uh, and he's like, yeah, yeah, maybe we can. And then he came back and he gave me room keys for a new room and I moved, but uh, I think they should have proactively offered that and not said, hey, why don't you just wait around if it still doesn't work? Because I was like, I can put my hand up there and I can tell it doesn't work. To me, when you call and the air conditioning isn't working and they come to fix it, they should bring one of those guns where they can check the temperature that's coming out of it. Like hotels that have a really good maintenance staff, that's what they do. All in all, would I stay here again? Well, if I have another Marriott credit card free night or I'm using Marriott points, I absolutely would because I think it's a really good redemption value. For $500, which was the cash rate tonight, I would not pay that kind of money, but I would pay something south of $200. So maybe if you find this hotel for $150, $175, then I think it's probably a pretty good bargain in Boston. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy watching some of my other videos from Boston and other places around the world. World. You can click here to watch them or find links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos.